Hi, I'm Kat Kremser with Creative Pro, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make these easy neon effects using just the appearance panel and a set of stacked strokes. If you'd like to follow along, there's a link in the description down below to download a starter file. But if you'd like to use your own file, just make sure that you have a dark background, as I have here on my locked background layer, so that you can see the glow effect as we build this up. You want to make sure that you have a few panels visible here. I've got my swatches panel, my appearance panel, which we'll be using to build the effect, and our graphic style panel, which we can use to save different versions of our neon effect so that we can reuse them in any document and apply them to different artwork. If any of those panels are missing from your workspace, you can find those all under the window menu. Go ahead and pop them open and drag them anywhere you'd like in your workspace. To get started, I'm going to make sure I've got nothing selected. Come over here to my appearance panel, which tells me at the top here that I've got no selection. And I'm just going to click this little button here to clear appearance. Then I'll grab my line segment tool. And I'll just go ahead and click and drag while holding shift to get a nice straight line. Coming back to our appearance panel here, you'll see that we've got a line with no fill and no stroke. The appearance panel is one of the most powerful features in Illustrator. What it allows you to do is layer multiple fills, strokes, or effects onto a single path or shape. So what we're going to do to create this neon effect is to create a stack of strokes that go from a darker base color and a thicker line at the bottom, and then the strokes will get thinner and brighter as we move towards the center of that really bright neon highlight. So the first thing we'll do is set up our base stroke here. We'll just click on the empty stroke that's already present and we'll set a color. I'm going to use the same purple color that I used for the demonstration. You can choose any color you like, just make sure it's in the medium range, not too dark, not too light. And then I will go ahead and set the width of the stroke to 100 points. And I'll just pop open the stroke panel options here. And I'm going to choose round cap because I think that looks a bit nicer for the neon tubing effect that we're going for. For this base layer, which will stay at the bottom of our stack, we'll want to keep the blending mode at normal and the opacity at 100%. The easiest way to create the rest of our strokes is to make sure that we have this base stroke selected. Go up here to the menu and just click duplicate item. Now this is going to give us an exact copy of that stroke. If I open the panel here, you can see that it retained the rounded edge caps. We've got the 100 points and the same stroke color. Because this stroke is on top of our base, we're going to set it to a slightly thinner width at 80 points, and then I'm going to open the opacity menu and change this to screen blending mode. Now you can see that's created this lighter shape on top of our base stroke, and the screen blending mode basically tells Illustrator to do some math with the colors, and it's using the color of our top stroke and our bottom stroke, which in this case are the same, and just creating a lighter shade to create that effect of brightness. Now that's a little bit strong, so I'm going to go back into my opacity here and drop this from 100% to 60% opacity before we move on to the next stroke. Now the trick here is that we are going to keep building by always selecting the top stroke that we just made and going to duplicate, and we'll be adjusting the width to be thinner with each layer. I'll set this layer to 60 points, and you can start to see this stacking effect that we have going on, where as we get closer to the center of the effect, the lines are both thinner and lighter. Let's go back to our appearance panel and duplicate the stroke one more time. We'll set this layer to 40 points. Go ahead and do that again. And this time we're going to set the width to 30 points. And we'll also change the blend mode from screen to color dodge. Color dodge has a similar lightning effect as the screen blending mode, but it tends to retain more color saturation and can be a bit brighter. So clicking on our first color dodge layer here, we'll go ahead and duplicate that. We'll adjust this stroke down to 20 points. And as we get towards the center, we want that effect to intensify. So keeping the color dodge blending mode here on our 20 point stroke, I'm going to adjust the opacity all the way up to 100%. To get the very bright highlight in the center, we'll just duplicate this one more time, adjust it down to 10 points. And here we're going to change the stroke color to white. And because that's just a little bit intense, we'll go back into our opacity settings here and we'll adjust that down to 80%. So now you can see how just stacking some simple strokes onto the same line gives you this glowing neon effect. Now, obviously, if we want to use this effect on different shapes and artwork, we don't want to have to build it every time, which is where the graphic style panel comes in. We're going to save this style for reuse, but before we do that, we need to scale it down because we've built it quite large. I'll go ahead and select my stroke. And coming over to my properties panel, I want to click on these three dots to open more options for my transform panel. And this is the option that I'm looking for, scale strokes and effects. In this case, I do want my strokes to scale down. So I want to make sure that that is checked before I adjust the size of our neon line. 
So that is checked, and I'll bring the width of this line down from about 1100 pixels to about 300, which gives us a more compact effect. Now I'll grab my smaller neon line here, and I'll just go ahead and drag it into my graphic styles panel. You can also add a new style via the menu or the plus icon here at the bottom. Now that we have our style saved, if you double click on your style here, you can go ahead and set a name. And now we can use that style to apply to different shapes and artwork. I'll grab my star tool here, go ahead and drag out a star. And then to apply our neon style, I just click on that in our graphic styles. And you can see we've got a nice neon star. You can experiment with different sizes, colors, and layer configurations to adjust exactly how your neon looks and save multiple copies in your graphic styles panel. One more quick tip I'd like to show you. If I grab my star here and just make a copy, with it selected, going up to the edit menu, you can come down to edit colors and select recolor artwork. And because we've only used the one stroke color to build the effect, it's very easy to change the color and experiment with different hues. Once you have a color you like, you can go ahead and save that style as well. These effects can also be applied to shapes that you create with the pen tool, the brush tool, or the pencil, or even to create your own neon lettering. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.